can i start ma'am Deepa Thank you ma'am Good afternoon everyone myself V Deepa second medical and psychiatric social work trainee department of social work Bharathas University I am very happy to see, see everyone present here let's start our second session I would like to welcome our professor and head department of social work Bharathas University Dr R Mangaleshwaran and senior professor Dr P Elango Associate Professor Dr. J. O. Jirda Nyanajani, Assistant Professor Dr. N. Rajvi, and I welcome our work workshop director Dr. D. Nirmala Ma'am. Welcome you Ma'am. And guest faculties Dr. Suresh Kumar, Dr. Kathikeyan, Dr. Selvamani, and research scholars. I heartily welcome our chief guest of the workshop, Mr. G. Arvindan, Psychiatric Social Worker and Head, Department of Social Work in Atma Hospital. and all my dear students and all the participants welcome all of you now we are in the second session of the workshop in continuation of the sketch given by our first resource person on the psychological problems during covid pandemic this session is going to through light on the practice of psychiatric social workers in the field now i introduce our chief guest mr g arvindan psychiatric social worker and head department of social work in atma hospital tichi welcome you sir he has been involved welcome sir he has been involved in various project at atma hospital and he is doing well he has vast knowledge and is specialized in psychiatric department he administered to 86 mental health awareness programs and he organized 348 community outreach efforts to expand awareness on mental health services i am very proud to introduce our chief guest welcome you sir now this thank session you, is handed you. over thank you sir now this session handed over to our chief guest thank you sir thank you and good afternoon good afternoon am i audible yes sir yes sir yes okay. please thank you thank you ma'am okay you are presenting right thank you first of all i would like to thank uh, the department of social work and uh, dr um, mangleshwaran sir dr nirmala ma'am and uh, the team the three members and they have organized a very good workshop because uh, mobilizing 1110 uh, students participants is not a uh, easiest thing we you know because we have organized a lot of programs previously and uh, with the small team and uh, the chinese uh, you are doing uh, a good job and ex excellent work and i thank uh, the dr selvamani sir the technical head because uh, the arrangements were very good you made a good attempt so i thank you all and uh, thanks for inviting inviting me uh, to address and what are the covid 19 the social focus role and what are the skills we need to do Uh, to practice social work in this current scenario can you change this slide yeah so uh, shall i present uh, from my side from my end it will be easier for me yes sir thank you yes is carry on sir yeah is it visible yes sir yes sir yes, sir. yes sir. Okay. Go to uh, 
covered these aspects so i'm not going to uh, speak anything uh, new or any um, academic related thing so just i'm going to present uh, what are the things we are doing tactically during this uh, from the day one of covid 19 outbreak okay so so th this will be a, a practical oriented session so first uh, we all know that uh, we are passing through the most critical juncture of this millennium due to this co first reported in china and continues to surge through continent affecting many countries from europe america and asia severely and uh, is still widening and um, it's still widening its burden of disease so we have we have seen and faced a lot of restrictions lockdowns even uh, the national nationwide lockdown and uh, home confinement strategies imposed by the imposed by the government and uh, we are, we are all facing a lot of uh, uh what do you say uh, psychological trauma so first before that we all know that what is um, a novel coronavirus so it's sars cov2 this is the second uh, uh spread uh, first uh, was in 2003 uh, it affected the majority of the european countries and now this is announced as pandemic first uh, the common cold uh these are you can see the left top corner you can see uh, the rhinovirus coronavirus and uh, para influenza so generally these three viruses are the main reason for our common cold so rhinovirus actively uh, active in early fall and spring and summer and uh, it causes more than uh, uh, up to 40% of our common colds coronavirus uh, comes in winter and uh, early spring cause 20% of colds there are more than 30 kinds there are more than 30 strains of coronavirus and uh, only 3 and 4 affect uh, severely uh, this uh, is one of its kind uh, and para influenza you all know that it cause 20% of colds again sometimes lead to severe infections like pneumonia and pneumonia especially in young children so this is not new to us uh, it's already in our body already uh, our body immune system uh, has uh, the ability to fight against coronavirus but this strain is different so that's why uh, we are we are all facing a lot of problems okay and uh, we all know about epidemic and pandemic so do you know about informed in infodemic so Yeah, you know, you you all know that um, in recent times the info media ecosystems, which means uh, uh, the social media, become popular across the world. Within days of onset of COVID nineteen outbreak in China, so there was a social media panic, and then was a plethora of fake information as well as negatively skewed, skewed in misinformation starting to spread faster than the virus itself. So this is called info media. so because of uh, the social uh, media and online the the emergence of uh, internet why did then right now we are using a lot of it and uh, in positive and negative way so that's the main cause for this psychological uh, problems so the director of who has uh, referred this to coronavirus informatic which is breeding fright panic by laying out unchecked mind mind boggling rumors so this is what uh, sebai in the director of who last year this covid 19 emerged to become a trending online uh, especially in uh, especially in youtube facebook instagram twitter and uh, many bloggers and youtubers they have started uh, creating videos about coronavirus so there, there is a lot of uh, information about uh, what to do what has not what what not, not to do um, so there are a lot of uh, information uh, going around in a social media platform so it affects directly our psychological health um, so the impact of covid 19 so generally the first uh, impact uh, it hit the gdp market value the current uh, the currency value especially 
and uh, it affected uh, profoundly the it changed the economic and uh, the socio economic uh, condition and uh, right now we we all know that uh, uh, last year we have seen uh, some more few cases in our city but right now uh, we are all experiencing even in our home uh, we have one covid patient so that much of spread right now we have and uh, death so death ha- has increased recently in the especially in covid uh, second wave and the fear of uh, death it's again rising uh, many of my friends and uh, neighbors they have called me and uh, asking for um, beds even uh, uh, they have positive uh, mild symptoms they are asking for voter beds because of the fear of death so and uh, we all experienced this uh, dr ramakrishnan um, uh, said in the morning uh, there was a lay off salary cuts and scarcity of daily needs and uh, the increased price for commodities and especially change in quality of life so because of salary cut and lay off people have become uh, uh, jobless and uh, you can see uh, here the last year the un- un- unemployment rose from uh, 6.7 to 26% and right now it's come down it has come down to 6.9 so still there still people are losing jobs and uh, there was there is a insecurity in job and malnutrition poor health addiction especially uh, sir uh, morning uh, rightly pointed out about addiction so generally people uh, take or abuse uh, drugs for three reasons one is for enjoyment one uh, other one is uh, they have problem i have a problem so i am drinking and abusing uh, uh, drugs or something and third one is i have i have a problem i cannot face it when i am uh, in a normal state so i am consuming or abusing alcohol or drugs so this kind of uh, addiction has been increased in recent days and uh, it destroyed uh, the covid-19 change this impacted the local and global businesses many uh, businesses uh, have been closed and uh, we are suffering from uh, financial crunch and uh, there is a panic uh, as i said earlier and uh, relapse of mental disorders we have seen a lot of uh, cases so even our patients uh, had relapses so because of inavailability availability of drugs and uh, the panic so because of the panic uh, the the symptoms have relapsed and illegal uh, drug abuse and uh, because of that uh, there was a uh, uh, many deaths that we have seen and suicide attempts suicides have become suicide uh, had happened excessive using of dating apps uh, so morning said and uh, use of uh, social media and addictive games so during this lockdown uh, we have started uh, using uh, social media for uh, excessively especially it has ha- it has a great impact on children so because of um, uh, the lockdown they couldn't go out generally children have uh, a lot of energy to when to went out they started uh, having de- developing behavioral problems to keep them calm we just gave them mobile and uh, and even after that uh, the classes became online so during that they started using uh, playing games so we have seen a lot of uh, children with uh, game addictions so this kind of impact uh, we have seen in uh, these days we have seen even uh, the in the first wave and second wave and the corona positive also as a stigma so many people uh, because of death fear obviously uh, death, death fear and uh, fear of infection even during uh, people affected by uh, generally people uh, have fear and uh, stigma stigmatize people with positive cases especially the frontline workers uh, in particular the health workers they are stigmatized marginalized even faced with discrimination uh, even uh, in first wave uh, many doctors uh, have, were asked to asked to vacate their homes even we faced we faced this challenge 
so when i uh, come back from work uh, during this uh, continuously we are working so when i come come back from my work so immediately the neighbor they immediately ran and said the home unlocked their doors so these kind of uh, things we have faced okay so what what we did as a psychiatric social work is in our mouse patients so after the outbreak after the lockdown imposed uh you have started uh, free teleconsultation or uh, atma teleconsultation and the inner study council counseling so initially we uh, counsel patient directly so uh, because of this covid uh, you know, restriction and uh, the social distancing uh, thing so we have started inner count teleconsulting the counsel is being uh, in a block and uh, the patients will be sitting in the another block so we we don't uh, meet them uh, directly through uh, a teleconsultation we counsel them and uh, we have called all our 70000 patients and ensure their safety and drug compliance and everything so if they have, don't have um, uh, money to get medicines we have sent medicines to them we have courier couriered it to their, their addresses and we have started uh, doing webinar series and 24% counseling service with partner ngos uh, this is our main uh, work because uh, during uh, pandemic uh, situation a lot of people have fear about uh, the infection uh, so they have started giving uh, counseling we have uh, we, we bought a two number two numbers we bought two numbers and uh, started pro- providing a 24 hour service counseling for quarantine and uh, covid negative uh, negative and positive paper so directly we volunteered ourselves uh, to the joint secretary joint uh, director of health and uh, uh, counseled uh, positive and negative patients uh, who are all kept in home government uh, hospitals digital awareness campaign on covid um, covid and mental health so our campaign uh, reached uh, up to 13 lakh people and continuous awareness programs to students and organizations so through online mode we have conducted programs even uh, the continue the first past one year we organized almost managed to organize uh, 141 awareness programs and uh, our social workers are doing uh, some research activities too okay so you all know this bio psycho and social thing aspects so biological means uh, the neurotransmitters and uh, uh, other stuff uh, which is happening in, inside the brain and uh, psycho means uh, the psychology and the, they concentrate more on behavioral aspects and social which means uh, the social aspects so we are the social workers uh, mainly concentrate on social uh, problems so here Uh, our role is very essential in during this pandemic situation because doctors they treat their illness and uh, they concentrate more on biological part psychologist and uh, psychotherapist they concentrate more on behavioral aspects and the change of behaviors and we the social workers we work with the people work with the community work with the family so we have a uh, great responsibility Uh, during this pandemic so i think uh, this um, uh, entire workshop is very useful to you okay what we did how we did so through uh, i I've, i haven't uh, given any uh, uh, mini therapies here because uh, these counseling measures we use only for covid for positive and negative patients so i've given uh, i've picked up few uh, the therapeutic in, in techniques uh, to present to you so first comes as uh, supportive counseling supportive counseling is nothing but uh, it aims to help people to feel deeply understand and support and the counselor helps the client to find ways to resolve these issues that they may have so counseling supportive counseling we just uh, console them uh, concentrate more on uh, their issues social issues any uh, psychosocial problems recent psychosocial problems and we counsel them on on that uh, thing and motivational uh, counseling 
it is again an intervention is described as a directive on patient centered counseling so we just motivate the patient to come out of the fear factor through uh, few techniques so generally we uh, practice um, uh, the eclectic approach because uh, cbt and nibt there are so many therapies but it will not uh, uh, work for all the people so we uh, pick techniques from various therapies and tailor them and uh, provide counseling so motivational counseling is one of its kind uh, it it helps the patients to refocus on their goals and picture uh, the important things in their life insight oriented on the psychoeducation insight orient- orientation is nothing but we try to uh, educate about their illness uh, whether they they are positive uh, covid positive or a mental ill or comorbid mental illness so we talk to them about the illness to the family and uh, the patient uh, and patient and try to uh, uh, accept uh, the illness uh, only then they will uh, come out of it and they will take medicines or uh, uh, take any uh, preventive measures to come out of it and then uh, health education is uh, very essential during this pandemic condition so we need to educate about covid uh, 19 because there are a lot of rumors so we need to we are in a position to give uh, exact detail so uh, it is very essential uh, to know learn uh, read about uh, covid 19 so whenever you speak to people uh, give right information so don't uh, misguide or mislead uh, give any misleading information and then brief therapy this works for uh, patient uh, clients who have lost their family members uh, it will help them and there are uh, according to uh, elizabeth cable ross uh, there are five stages of grief many psychotherapists and psycholo- psychologists they know it uh first comes denial first initially any uh, death or any loss happens first they deny because their uh, ego will not uh, accept it so when uh, when they accept uh, the loss again they will uh, go into depression out of depression they will come accept it so first they, they deny the loss and uh, because of that they get anger and then they bargain so why it has happened to me no it is not it has not happened he is there only so please bring him back, back. so like that they, they say after once they get counseled once they accept it once they realize that the person is no more again they will get into depression so after depression only they will accept the loss so that is the ultimate aim of this grief therapy so there are many techniques in grief therapy to do that and then solution focused grief therapy um sometimes uh, we can solve the problem of a person sometimes we may not so it is better in 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 this situation we cannot uh, do problem focused counseling uh, for many patients so we choose to give solution focused grief therapy it places focus on the person's present and future circumstances and goals rather than the past experiences so this is the main uh, concept in cbt they go back and look back to the root the cause in uh, solution focused they don't uh, look back the cause or root again immediately they will uh, go to the future so the the entire therapy is uh, is framed like that in goal oriented therapy or uh this is a goal oriented work goal oriented therapy the symptoms or issues bringing bringing a person to therapy are typically not targeted it doesn't look at the roots like cbt does uh, as i said and then uh, activity scheduling it's uh, it, it is uh, one of a uh, technique of cbt activity scheduling is nothing but it's an effective behavioral treatment that addresses social isolation in patients with depression so we schedule we try to uh, ask them to write their, their, their regular uh, daily activity and then we reschedule it and uh, once they start practicing uh, we just assess 
how they are uh, spending their time and their routine activities after uh, monitoring and uh, talking with the patient we try to alter some uh, and add some uh, new behavior and new activity uh, to come out of uh, their fear and isolation and loneliness and thought reconstruct reconstruction this involves taking a hard look at negative thought patterns perhaps you tend to gen over generalize assume the worst will happen so whenever any problem occurs we uh, tend to generalize uh, with, with the worst thing so instead of uh, thinking the worst we will try to change the way of uh, thinking okay so this is the thought we constructed and mindfulness breathing mindfulness behavioral therapy is a working uh, marvel it changes uh, marvelous things but uh, we are not focusing on mindfulness behavioral therapy we can but uh, here we are uh, uh, do because of uh, this pandemic uh, situation so we are more focusing on mindfulness breathing so there is nothing but so mindfulness breathing is to focus your attention on, on your breath, breath the inhale and exhale we just uh, ask the patient to concentrate on uh, their in inhaling and exhaling so with this we can uh, reduce their anxiety and uh, fear even wherever they are they can do it easily so there is no need to have a separate room or uh, any uh, uh, prior uh, uh, arrangements to do this so simply they can sit anywhere just uh, they lie down or uh, sit uh just for even uh, they can open or close their eyes and uh, just to inhale and exhale you need to watch it so that's it so do it for 8 to 10 minutes then uh, they will they will experience the change in their anxiety jpmr mainly this is done by our psychologist jacobson's progressive muscle relaxation technique that's a type of therapy that focusing on tightening and relaxing specific muscle groups in sequence so by concentrating on uh, specific areas and tensing them and relaxing them you can become more aware of your body and physical sensations so this is one of uh, uh, one of a uh, relaxation techniques and in my guided imagery again the again we picked up from uh, cbt so guided imagery is a uh, technique where we ask Uh, where we navigate the patient to uh, a pleasant uh, event or pleasant uh, memories so first we get all the information of the patient so they the like and dislikes and then uh, we talk to the patient uh, for for instance uh, what we do uh, means uh, we ask the patient uh, to relax and we ask them to do some breathing exercise and we navigate them to uh, a beach so you are sitting in front of a beach uh, a small a mild breeze breeze touches you and uh, you can uh, sense the uh, sand so like that we navigate them we tell them so slowly they start experiencing virtually and then uh, they will find uh, the reduction in their anxiety and uh, stress okay so these are all the techniques we are using for covid patients what are the uh, what are the required skills to be a psychiatric social worker first be passionate about social work so that is the foremost thing and then uh, be a patient listener so when you know, uh, in psychiatric situation settings you cannot uh, implement or impose your prejudices or you are pre conceived ideas on your patients so you must be a patient listener sometimes patients or clients may uh, talk irrelevantly or uh, they just deviate from their topic so in that time uh, we can uh, cut short that so we can tell them so no no you talk about this no don't uh, divert from this topic so we can do that but still we need to be a patient listener and uh, we must learn the code of ethics so there are a lot of uh, there are few num numbers of code of uh, codes uh, in professional practice we need to learn that so being a so, uh, social work trainee we must know this code of ethics 
and be empathetic to your clients so empathy you know all uh, sympathy empathy and uh, apathy what it means so be empathetic and uh, communication is essential so we, we must uh, know the regional language and official uh, language of uh, organization so and that, that is more for most important and confidentiality confidentiality so we need to maintain uh, patient's uh, information confidential so we cannot uh, disclose any information to anyone even uh, uh, to your friends so we cannot mock at them and even they comes uh, whenever we who meet your client uh, in uh, outer space we cannot go and ask them how are you are you taking medicines uh, we cannot ask uh, all those questions so if they are comfortable if they talk about the illness can uh, do that and uh, upskilling and reskilling so this is uh, for most important thing so these days uh, social workers lack in uh, upskilling and reskilling so upskilling means after completing um, msw you appear for mphil or do phd or if you are uh, not not confident uh, in a particular thing you just try to learn if you are not uh, fluent in english you go for a class or if you are not uh, good in computer skill you do that and reskill so after completing social work again you go back and uh, study a, 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 your, your techniques and therapies so that uh, that helps you in future professional competency again uh, there are a lot of skills you need to uh, know so we so we need to develop a professional competency and learn social work theories and uh, personality theories learn family systems and community systems theories so this is more again uh, important thing there are a lot of uh, social work theories and personality theories whenever you want to work, uh, work in a psychiatric uh, psychiatric setting we must know all the those the theories and especially the family systems the family dynamics we must learn and research uh, in our social work degree we we don't uh, do a exact uh, research so once you come come out of uh, your uh, degree or college so once you start practicing you must uh, do a real uh, research and uh, self uh, referral service learn where uh, the information is so we need to be a referral uh, uh, we must uh, refer patients whenever there is a need so attitude to learn so that is more important and volunteer service so volunteer self uh, to an organization so do uh, social work apart from your time go to a jail to, to offer uh, counseling to uh, jail inmates and go to a old age home and uh, do counseling and even you can go to orphanage and you can uh, spend your uh, uh, routine uh, relax leisure time there and read international classification of diseases particularly the f category so international classification of diseases which means icd uh, it's a uh, framed by who the f category is for psychiatry you must uh, know the all the codes and the diagnostic formulations then only we can practice or diagnose patients and uh, diagnostic uh, step and diagnostic and uh, stati- stati- statistical manual so this is from uh, american uh, psychiatric uh, association apa and the uh, international classification of functioning disability and health this is framed by again who so if we are social workers must know this the social workers and uh, rehab re- rehabilitation professionals must know international classification of functioning disability and health and to learn from others learn from your uh, uh, teacher learn from your uh, superiors your senior uh, social workers practice 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 always be creative and innovative try to Uh, innovate new things in social work so this online uh, platform helps you a lot because uh, we can learn a lot of through this 
So that's why I appreciated uh, Dr. Selvam Mani because uh, most of most of the social workers they doesn't know how to utilize it. But uh, the team, uh, the entire uh, you know Bharatiya University Department of Social Work is doing a great job in online platform. So practice only make you a good uh, social social worker. Thank you. If you have any doubts, please ask me. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your valuable presentation, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. I hope this session has been very useful for all of us to discuss scenario. Now we are move on to question and session. Dear participant, kindly any. Can you audible? Can you audible? Yes. Okay. Yes, madam. Dear participants, kindly put your queries at the chat box. One person has asked: As a medical and psychiatric social worker, social worker is eligible to do counseling and clinical practice. Yes, you you eligible to do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. One question from. Yes. Leah, yeah. the yes, medical and psychiatric social worker is eligible to do counseling and clinical practice. Yeah, they yes, we are eligible to do that. So in uh, our psychiatric setting, they, they they don't want any psychologist or uh, I'm not uh, uh, what do you call. And I, I don't say that uh, we need a, a particular psychologist or a psychiatrist only do a particular uh, counseling or thing. So social workers are eligible to do counseling, even uh, therapies. In our Atma Hospital, uh, we train them to do uh, all the assessments, uh, even uh, the mental retardation IQ test, also can do that. Thank you, sir. Or if you. Uh, do one thing do ms psychology and you will be eligible to do all the all other uh, psychological assessments thank you sir and priya jasni has asked as a social worker how could we help someone in grief for losing their family members because of covid so we can offer them grief therapy so we can cover all the aspects of uh, aspects to come out of uh, or manage the loss out of uh, the family members death talk to them and uh, listen to their uh, expressions and feelings and uh, make them aware that uh, stress is universal uh, there are uh, many inconveniences we face in our life so whatever happens we must learn uh, from this and uh, and uh, what do you what to say uh, keep uh, move forward in this current scenario where the pandemic on the rise can common man provide solace and general counseling to near and dear ones dear jude yes sir thank you sir sir i have another one question from youtube yes. okay okay thank you sir we'll answer this question later and uh, Another one question, Praveen Nadesh Pandey. Medical social workers have any registration for practice? So last year, the state mental health authority they asked uh, social workers uh, to register under the state mental health authority. The uh, thing is, they uh, proposed uh, for uh, they asked MPhil, uh, MPhil in clinic. So psychiatric social workers are eligible to register. 
for practice but uh, later uh, all other psychiatrists and social workers uh, lobbied with uh, the state mental health authority so uh, now uh, any social workers with four years uh, eligibility i guess and with the mphil degree can uh, apply for license registration thank you sir teacher can we give counseling to covid patients near our locality yes we can so first we need to learn basics of counseling and a uh, few techniques of uh, covid counseling and then we can do that so there are a lot of uh, information available in uh, google we can do that yes sir yes sir so next question sir okay a uh, question from anaga uh, okay. telephonic counseling 100% successful and effective in this covid situation sir so we have no other go we have no options so uh, counseling patients directly will not help because of uh, the social distancing and uh, the risk of uh, infection uh it will be uh, effective to some extents uh intense anxiety or if a patient calls with calls you with suicidal ideation during uh, that time those time to help you to help the especially the telephone counseling okay sir thank you sir uh, next question sir any special online course in tele counseling suggest yes sir there is no uh, particular online course but uh, the nimans the uh, nimans bangalore in their website you can find uh, a column where the how to practice tele counseling in india so recently after the covid outbreak even the indian psychiatric society they have given guidelines the guidelines for tele consultation you can you can get it from nimans website it is there okay sir thank you sir thank you okay now we will move on to vote of thanks next i call upon ms malarviji medical and psychiatric social work trainee for vote of thanks over to malarviji a warm good evening to all thank you thank you so much ms deepa for giving the opportunity to deliver vote of thanks for this wonderful session i would like to thank our guest and speaker mr arvind kanishan psychiatric social worker at from atma hospital city for accepting our invitation and enlightening us by sharing his knowledge and experience on the topic overall section gave clarity on for widely covering the impact of covid uh, role and functions of uh, psychiatric social work at atma very clearly you detail detail the application of uh, therapies the techniques and types of counseling used by uh, psychiatric social worker thank you sir with your experience in the field of you gave given tips for the social workers to help them their skills uh, reach out their needy it was an informative and motivational presentation and i also thank our head of the department dr nageshwar sir for providing an opportunity to organize this workshop to enhance our professional skills even during this time of lockdown and covid pandemic and i also deeply thank to our social work family social work family senior faculty dr p ilangu associate professor dr j o jirila narayan lg assistant professor dr r rajavel and our guest faculties dr m suresh kumar dr r selvamani dr r kartikeyan and our ps mpl scholars and first and second mstw students for their immense support thank you so much and i would like to thank our shop workshop director dr d nirmala assistant professor thank you ma'am last but not the least thank you thank you each and every one for participant who are uh, connected through this google meet and youtube live stream i hope and believe this section was useful and beneficial to you thank you so thank you so much once again thank you to uh, so much wonderful presentation oh dutipa thank you ms malarvi now we are going to conclude our session we have our next session on 4:30 pm by dr vp nirmala professor psychiatric social worker and in impans and the topic therapeutic intervention in clinical social work so kindly join with us before 10 minutes thank you everyone thank you for your listening and supporting thank you thank you so much